Hi guys, yasas ke kalo sirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. I am so happy that you guys love bread as much as me and my family do because today I'm going to be teaching you how to make an olive filled bread that's very similar to the wildly popular feta bread that I shared with you guys about two weeks ago. That one went crazy on Facebook and here and you guys already made it and shared pictures with me and it makes my heart so happy to see those. You're going to love this one too. It's going to be filled with feta, roasted red peppers, and scallions. It's vegan, so that's another plus for all of my friends on here that don't eat dairy or meat. This one's going to be perfect for you guys. Let's get started. So I'm going to be using my stand mixer. If you don't have one, you can do this in a big bowl. It's just, it is a sticky dough, so it might get a little tricky. So if you aren't using a big bowl in your hands, then make sure that you oil them or you grease them with oil as often as possible. That's going to help the bread knead easier. So in my bowl, I'm going to add two cups of lukewarm water, one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, two teaspoons of granulated sugar, and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Now at this point, you want to let this mixture sit for about eight minutes just to make sure that your yeast is alive and well and active. I already made a batch in the morning, so I know that this batch of yeast is good, so I don't need to wait. The thing about it is if you, if you haven't used your yeast in a while, you don't want to skip this step because if the yeast has somehow died or went bad or whatever, then this, the bread is not going to rise and then all of the other ingredients are going to go to waste. So don't skip this step. It's just a few minutes that you have to wait. Once you see a foamy cloud um, rise to the top or form on top of the, the liquid, then you know that your yeast is good. But I'm going to skip that step because like I said, I know that the yeast is good because I made a batch this morning. Now I'm going to add four cups of all-purpose flour. And the way I measure flour, I just fill up the cup. I don't compact it. I just make sure that it's full and then I just scrape off the top. That would be one cup. So this is the second cup. Three and four. That's four cups. I'm also going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. And a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm going to attach the dough hook. And I'm going to let this knead on low speed for about 10 to 12 minutes. The last minute or two, I'm going to increase the speed to, to like a two or a three. So it just gets everything that's stuck to the bottom off the bowl and needs everything really well. Then I'm going to transfer the dough to an oiled bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. So go ahead and set the bowl in the warm part of your house so that way it can uh, double in volume. It's going to take about an hour and 30 minutes or so, but if you use my dryer trick, which is really simple, you just put a few towels in, a dry in the dryer and then you run it for about 10 minutes so it can get nice and warm. Turn it off and then put the bowl in there, close the door, make sure the dryer is off. The heat that's in there is going to make the dough rise much faster within about 45 minutes. To max an hour, the dough will have doubled in volume and it'll be ready to, to fill with the olive mixture that we're going to make right now. So over here I have two cups of Kalamata olives that are already pitted. Buying them pitted is really going to save lots of time. And of course you can use a combination of your favorite olives, whatever they are. They don't have to be just the Kalamata olives. I'm going to roughly chop these.
Okay, the olives are roughly chopped. Over here I have two roasted bell peppers from the jar. You can use one if it's a really big one, but I love the flavor of roasted bell peppers, so I'm gonna use both of these medium-sized ones. And I'm just gonna dice them. In the bowl they go with the olives. Then over here, I have five scallions that I finely chop. And then anytime you cut, uh, you cut scallions, you wanna soak them in cold water. So that way all, any dirt that might be trapped in between them sinks down to the bottom. And try to get as much of the, of the water out as you can. So that way the bread won't be soggy. Even though I strained them, I'm still gonna just pat them dry with this paper, these paper towels. That should be good enough. And then in the bowl they go. I like to clean as I go. Now, to the mixture, I'm gonna add about two, three tablespoons of olive oil. And about two teaspoons of dried oregano. You can use thyme, rosemary, whatever you love. And just give it a nice mix. Mint would be really nice in this too, as would dill. And that's it, the filling is ready. I'm gonna set that aside. So here we have the dough. It has risen beautifully. It's nice and soft and airy. Let's go ahead and deflate it. Now what we're gonna do, because this dough is kind of tricky to work with, it's very sticky, and then once you add all the olives in there, it's gonna be really hard to transfer to the baking pan. So I am gonna put it on this um, parchment paper. And if the dough is still a little too sticky to handle, you can uh, put some olive oil on your hands and it'll be much easier. I'm gonna shape it into a circle um, because it, I just think that looks really pretty. But this works well as a rectangle too. If you just wanna spread it out to the size of the parchment paper, that would work. This is really simple, you guys. Now you wanna take all of this delicious filling and put it in the center. If you want to, you can put some sun-dried tomatoes in here. If you're not worried about keeping it vegan, go ahead and put some feta, or you know what would be really good? A combination of feta and gouda cheese. That would be delicious. Just like that. Some uh, crushed red pepper flakes, if you want, would be nice in here. Now take all of the edges and just bring them towards the center to cover that filling, because this is gonna be the bottom of the bread. Kind of spread it out so it's even. Okay, now here comes the tricky part. You want to have the, the baking dish ready with another sheet of parchment paper on top of that. And then I have some semolina flour. If you don't like the texture of semolina, just leave it out. You can use cornmeal instead. But I like the little crunchiness on the bottom, so I'm gonna sprinkle some semolina right over the top of the parchment. And then I'm gonna take the filled piece of, the filled piece of bread dough and very carefully transfer it. And a good idea, which I didn't do, is to put a little bit of oil on, the, on this parchment before you put the bread on top of it. Once again, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, what a mess. Make sure you guys put some parchment or even some flour, that would work too. Not too bad. 
I'm going to get a little bit of olive oil onto my hands because now I need to spread this out a little bit without ripping it. There you have it. Then you're going to take that same plastic wrap that was on the top before when it rose for the first time and just loosely cover it. I'm going to set this aside for about 30, 40 minutes just so that the dough can puff up a little bit. Again, put it in a nice warm part of your house. And in the meantime, preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so after 30 minutes, this is what the dough should look like. You could leave it another 10 minutes. There we go. Now I'm just going to brush the top with olive oil. And then I'm also going to dip my fingers in the olive oil. And I'm just going to press the dough down just so it can make a few indentations. And then this is totally optional, but I love sesame seeds on top of bread. So I'm going to sprinkle the top with some sesame seeds. I'm using white, but you can do black and white sesame seeds or just black or a combination of both or just white like I'm using today. So like I said, my oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to bake on the center rack for about 30 minutes. It's going to be 25 to 30 minutes. This does need a little bit more time than the feta bread because the ingredients inside are very moist. So you just want to make sure that the bread is cooked fully through. But keep in mind, every oven cooks different. So as soon as it turns nice and golden on top, also lift it to check the bottom to make sure that the bottom is nice and golden too. Then it's ready. Take it out and let it sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes so everything can settle. And then it's going to be time to dig in. So the bread baked for 30 minutes in my oven, but again, every oven bakes differently, so do keep an eye on it. When it looks beautifully golden on top and the bottom is also cooked the way this is, then go ahead and pull it out of the oven and let it sit for 15 minutes so everything can settle, and then it is time to serve it. Now, of course, you can serve it just as is with some feta cheese on the side, some olive oil for dipping, but it is so flavorful just the way it is. It doesn't need anything else. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. And look at that, it's chock full of olives and just all these delicious ingredients. It's so moist on the inside, time to take a bite. Mmm. So flavorful. The Kalamata olives really give it tons and tons of flavor. I love the little bite of scallion in here and the roasted red pepper just adds the perfect amount of sweetness. You can fill this with whatever you like. You could add caramelized onions to this if you want to. Like I said, sun-dried tomatoes would be really nice to this. It'll add a little more sweetness and a little bit of a chewy bite. There's a lot that you can do with this. Let me know what you're planning on adding in the comment section down below. Share pictures with me on social media because it makes my heart so happy to see that you guys are making my recipes and you're enjoying them with your loved ones. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. To get all the exact measurements, head on over to DimitrasDishes.com, print out the recipe, make it, and I will see you here next time with another recipe worth sharing. Yes, us. Yes.